we're back in the hotel elevator going down This is the Marina Hotel. The area looks pretty uh, broken down. However, the uh, Marina Hotel is no longer called the Marina Hotel. It's, it's one of the family of the uh, Leonardo Hotels now. Outside of the Toys R Us is a nice little place in it for kids. We've just turned around and kind of heading back towards our hotel. We're looking for a falafel place and we think we found one. Around various areas on the Tel Aviv beach there are play centers for children. This is the area where there's many different kinds of beaches. This one here is for Orthodox women. This one may be for Orthodox men. Here's a third beach right here, the entrance way. This is the dog beach. Many people in Tel Aviv seem to be very much into exercise. Inside the marina lobby. This is called Gordon Pool, public area for people to use. This is opposite the marina. And this is the marina itself. About 9.30 at night. Many people out on the beach. Some exercising. Some walking or running or riding bikes along the pathway here. Some eating at outdoor places and watching movies or television on big screens.
LED Beach. They're dropping in the distance. One has to be careful bikes and different kinds of things that people ride coming sometimes very quick. And lots of dogs. Lots of people and kids running up and down the beach or the beach the uh, the drive along the beach It's morning out, down on the beach, they're setting up some kind of a, uh, looks like a volleyball, possibly tournament arena or something. And out in the water, something that's very rare, virtually no waves at all. The water is almost perfectly calm. We're very close to it. And in the distance, on the horizon, it's a bit hazy. And we're getting ready to say goodbye to Tel Aviv. Certainly a great place to eat breakfast to have a good view.
The tournament is now going. As we watch these players, these are extremely talented players. This is some kind of a, I don't know if it's a nationwide tournament or what it is. But it's enjoyable to watch. three matches going on. was tempted in all ways as we will be but yet without sin Jesus overcame all schemes and devices of the devil he was beaten worse than any man he had his beard ripped off his face when his enemies were finished with him he would have looked like a big truck ran over him now Jesus tells you follow me you will go through many, many trials, temptations, situations, hardships, days of joy, and days of anguish. You will be tempted to turn aside from the straight gate a narrow way. Now you must overcome all things as Jesus did. Temptations excuses be strong in the Lord now you must overcome 1 Corinthians 10 13 there hath no temptation taken you or seized you but such as is common to man but God is faithful who will not let you to be tempted above or beyond what you can bear but when you are tempted he will also provide a way out so you can stand up under it. As a result of these many temptations and trials, you can expect to go through. Most will turn aside rather than trusting in and following Christ to the very end. Being killed for Christ lies ahead for some. Life is a test to see if you will obey God's word or not. We must all go through <clears throat> excuse me we must all go through many tests which includes all sorts of hardships the cares of this world the deceitfulness of riches all sorts of lusts and the deceitfulness of pleasures those that endure these hardships as a good soldier of Christ through faith will hear well done good and faithful servant. The foundation that will give you the strength to endure is God's Word, which produces faith, if your heart is right. Any person that allows anything to keep them out of God's Word daily is making a mistake that could cost them eternity. God's Word relates to us to be in His Word, study His Word, hide His Word in our hearts. If you disobey this most fundamental command and basic commandment, which is your foundation, you certainly will also disobey other commandments. 
Have you ever considered not being in the Word is sin? Does he command you to hear or read or study his word? If he tells you to do so and you do not do it, it is sin. Have you not read, he that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. James 4.17 Excuses are for those that perish. If a so-called Christian does not have enough faith or strength to put aside all obstacles each day to be in God's Word, then neither will they have enough strength to die for Christ. A Christian is to be strong in the Lord, not weak-minded. Anyone that loves a husband, a wife, or children, or their job, or whosoever enough that they will allow him to hinder him from being in God's word faithfully is not worthy of Christ. Hear God's word. Beware. A Christian that will not take a stand for Jesus when it comes to their children, relatives, loved ones, employers is not worthy of Christ. Being in God's word is command, not an option. If you make excuses regarding being God's word, beware, lest he say he does not know you at the judgment. You want to be with the word, which is Jesus for eternity, you had better be in the word right now. That bears repeating. You want to be with the Word, which is Jesus for eternity? You had better be in the Word right now. Obstacles. Matthew 10, 35 to 37. It is written, For I am come to turn a man against his father, and a daughter against her mother and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law and a man's foes shall be they of his own household in other words the very people that may hinder you from obeying God may th be those that are the closest to you your own family or your own parents. He that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Life is a test of obedience to God's word. To put it bluntly, not to obey God now is to be in the lake of fire for eternity. You must overcome all obstacles that hinder your walk with Jesus and your obedience to Him. Those that overcome all things shall inherit eternal life. Few Christians are overcomers and fear God as God's word commands. They say they love God, but Titus 1.16, they claim they know God, but by their actions they deny him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for doing anything good in IV. Listen to that again. They claim they know God. They claim they're saved. But by their actions, they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, unfit for doing anything good. 
Those of you hearing or reading this message, the choice is yours. Obedience to God's word brings eternal life. All other ways leads to hell. Repentance means this, saying yes to God and his word. It is forsaking your sins, your disobedience to God, and to his word. Then it is pricking up your cross every day and following Jesus no matter where it leads you and no matter what hardships and obstacles confront you. You are to trust in Jesus every step of the way. Offending. How far should you go in following Jesus? Hear God's word. Mark 9, 42 to 45. Matthew 9, 29 and 30. And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, that is, a born-again Christian, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Those that offend you or hinder you, God promises their end shall be horrible. And beware that you do not hinder a fellow born-again Christian. And if thy hand offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter into life maimed than having two hands to go into hell, into the lake that shall never be quenched. For it is profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. And if thy foot offend thee, cut it off. It is better for thee to enter halt into life than having two feet to be cast into hell, into the fire that shall never be quenched. And if thy right eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. For it is prof profitable for thee that one of thy members should perish and not thy whole body should be cast into hell. <clears throat> also on fasting, Matthew 10, 37 and 38. Through God's word, we can overcome all the devices of the devil. As we follow Jesus, we are to fast. Jesus fasted. Jesus went to be with his Father. His apostles, after Jesus went to be with his Father, his apostles, his disciples, and his church fasted. God gives us guidelines on fasting. Have you not read Mark 2.20? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them, and then shall they fast. This is so important that it is repeated again by Matthew 9.15 and it is repeated again by Luke number 5.35. Some may not like this, but show me a Christian that claims they follow Jesus for a good period of time but have not fasted and do not fast and I will show you a Christian that is one in name only. God's word is unmistakably clear. His children shall fast. Excuses are for those that perish. Once again, anyone that puts anything before Jesus and his word whether it be job, children, family, relatives, any temptation of this world, beware. You are being tested by God to see if you really love him far beyond all other things, including your own life.
Laodicea preaches how God loves us. Over and over and over, you'll hear, if you listen to the radio or television, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you, God loves you. It is written, Matthew 22, 37 to 40, Mark 12, 30, 31, Luke 10, 27, 28, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. You see, there's a lot of preaching out there about Jesus loving us. There's not a whole lot of preaching. We are to love God. Hear it again. Jesus said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. There is none other commandment greater than these. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Thou hast answered right. Do this, and thou shalt live. End of message. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this message that you've given us. And I pray that however you would guide us to make this available to people, that some may come to understand more fully your word in this lukewarm church age. We thank you, Lord. In Jesus Christ we pray. Amen.